So then you know what to tell. And when you tell, then you overcome. We are used to sweep it under the rug mentality. What goes on in this house stays in this house. Don't tell them that uncle molested you because that's family, personal business. Don't go out there and tell them that God is and will be your deliverer and your overcomer because that's personal business. We don't want to tell our story to the world. So a lot of our older generation are looking to overcome because they continue to sweep things under the rug. We have a learned behavior of sweeping things under the rug, making the enemy bigger than he is. One of the things I came to tell you is that you will receive the enemy how you perceive him. And so if you perceive the enemy as a big threat and not defeated, then that is how you will receive him. We used to sing a song back in the day that said, the devil's already defeated. We don't sing that too much anymore because it seems as if the devil has the victory. But I came here to tell you today that if you would faith it, if you would trust in God's ability to do a thing, then the devil could be under your feet. You could get the devil behind thee. You could control the enemy. Y'all don't know. You don't know that you can control the enemy. Yes, how you respond and react to the threats of the enemy is how he will respond and react to you later. So when you see the enemy and, and he comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but you already know that Jesus is Jehovah Jireh. He is the provider. So right there, we already knock off one of his roles that he can't steal because God is a provider, okay? So the second role is that he come to kill. Well, the Bible tells us that God is the only one that can destroy a thing. So that's another role that we take away from the enemy. So he came to kill, no. He came to steal, no. He came to destroy, no. So his roles already are invalid. You give him the validation. You give the enemy the validation to come into your home, to destroy your children, to come into your job, to take care of your husbands and your wives. You give the enemy control over your schooling and over your test. You give the enemy the credit. That if we looked at your credit score for the devil, and we looked at your credit score for God, which one would be getting into the house, the car, the mansion? Have you given the enemy a perfect score? To a battle that the Lord said he already won. You are giving the enemy the win. No. No, no. We have to come together to tell the enemy who is in control. Because if you don't tell him, he'll keep playing with you. If you don't tell the enemy to back off, he's going to keep coming. Some of us are afraid to approach the enemy. How, when they supposed to be your footstool? If you can't approach the enemy, you can't get to the footstool. If you can't command the enemy, you can't get to the next level. As somebody really special says, new levels, new devils. I say new devils, new levels. Because if you're running out of footsteps, then more enemies have to come. Because you gotta get to 
the next level. So when the enemies come, you say, why thank you? I was looking to get to the next level anyway. Thank you. I was looking to get to my promise anyway. Thank you. I was looking to get to that promotion anyway. Thank you. I was looking to get what God had for me anyway. So thank you. And in the case that I may run out of footstools, please continue to come as I am always eager to go to the next level. The confidence of your defeat is in you. You have the confidence to defeat the enemy, defeat him. You want to keep bleeding and not reach? That's fine, but there's somebody in here that's tired of bleeding. There's somebody in here that's tired of giving the enemy the win. There's somebody in here that's looking to get their control back. God says you've been conditioned for command. You have been conditioned, this suffering, this storm was your conditioning. Your conditioning will match that which you have the power to control. Stay with me. If you have been conditioned, and it is great, like David was conditioned, then you will get the crown. Some of us have been anointed, but not appointed. Because we haven't reached for the power. The woman with the issue of blood was anointed with faith. But she had to reach to receive the power. Some of you have been anointed, but you are failing because you haven't reached for the power. You're so worried about the pool of blood on the floor that you don't see the hem. You're so worried about the condition that you don't see the controller of the condition. You're so worried about what they look like, what, what they're going to say about you, that you don't go through the crowd to get your healing. You're so worried about what the world says that you can't grab a hold of the hymn. We want you to have a relationship with God. You don't do too well having a relationship with yourself. So how can I tell you to trust in God when you don't trust in you? You don't trust in your power. You don't trust in your ability. You don't trust in the God in you. So I can't tell you to lean on to God's understanding and not thy own, that he will direct your path because you haven't even gotten on the road. We always talk about it's not how you start, it's how you finish. I say that you should start. You should start because as it stands right now, we can't endure a race that we would not start. As it stands, the tests and trials are to build endurance, but we don't want to go through the tests and trials, so we don't have endurance. And we get mad and blame a blameless God because we don't want to go through the bleeding. We don't want to go through the suffering. Don't want to go through the pain of the process. We don't want to destroy generational curses. We want to break them. Now, this is what we pray, right? Break every generational curse, right? That's what we pray. But what is broken can be put back together again. If you would use the power that's in you to destroy generational curses, then you would stop being picked on by the generational curses that you keep breaking instead of destroying. Destroy it. If it is the anointing that destroys the yoke, then it must be the anointing that destroys the curses. If we don't have the anointing, we can't destroy. We focus so much on the bleeding 
then we cannot read. If you're not willing to reach for God in your most fragile state, in your most ugly, nasty state, you can't reach for your father when you are dirty, broken, and weary. You can't ask your father a question when you are tired, lonely, and scared. You, you can't ask your dad to help you. What is relationship if you will be consumed by religion? If you will allow the rules and the protocols of the world to dictate how close you are to God, that a man or a woman can tell you whether you're supposed to be on the pulpit or not, and you are not supposed to wear pants or makeup or earrings or, or your clothes are too tight so you can't minister effectively because your clothes are too tight. When Mary Magdalene got before her knees in her whorish ways, excuse me, and she poured out her oil and I dare you to tell somebody you don't know the cost don't talk about my clothes I'm in church I came I came I could have stayed at home we, we, we're so involved in the church religion rules that we've forgotten completely about relationship. When God sent his son because of love, not law. He sent his son because of love, not law. Not my makeup, not my earrings, not my skirt, not my chucks, not my ability to be on the pulpit or not. He came for love. Where is the love? Ministers, preachers, mothers, fathers. Where is the love? When did we allow the enemy to dictate relationship? When did you allow the enemy to taunt you? To understand that there's a survivor. You are the survivor. Yes, the road is tough. Yes, yes, indeed, the road. The road is tough, I'm sorry. Because when you're walking blind, it's tough. And we have to walk by faith, which is blind anyway. Otherwise, he wouldn't have said, walk by faith and not by sight. So my faith walk is a blind walk in trusting and believing in God's ability. You pray on the level that you believe. You receive on the level that you believe. So if you are not receiving on a high level, you don't believe in a high level. Because we say at Brick, we are standing in the evidence of our faith. Meaning, whatever you have, babies, is your fault. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So it is the evidence of whatever you hoped for. So if you're not hoping big, then you won't receive big evidence. You can't get mad about God. That's your fault. Faith bigger. Stop blaming God for your position. You would be much further along if you would endure. If you would endure, the Bible says that you will be complete, lacking nothing. So that means that if I endure the race, then I will be complete and I will not lack anything. So whatever it is that I need, if I decide to endure, I will not lack anything. If you're lacking, you haven't endured. If you are lacking, 
then you haven't endured. The tests and trials, you haven't endured. You're spending a lot of time asking God why? You need to walk. Walk forward. Everybody's telling you you can't be nobody, you can't do this, this is too big, your dream is too big. Prove them wrong. For one time in your life, trust that God has placed something inside of you that is bigger than the test you are going through. We focus so much on the generational curses, we forget about our inheritance. We forget about who we are an heir to. We forget about the blessings. And the blessings say they add rich and not sorrow. So if you are in a sorrow place, if the road is heavy and the weight is heavy, then you're not operating in your blessing. See, the Bible says that the blessings add or make rich and add no sorrow. The steps of a good man are ordered, ordered by the Lord. She may have came in here running reckless, but when you leave, you're going to endure. Because there is a gift, a call, a specific plant inside of you that must grow. I have to leave in a minute, but before I leave, I want to go ahead and cancel out this myth while I have all of you here. Mustard seed faith is the minimum requirement. So when you stand in the enemy's face and you say, I've got mustard seed faith, that's not really something to boast about because that is the minimum requirement to move a mountain, a mountain. Mustard seed faith moves a mountain. But you see, Dad, the problem is that in life, we have several mountains. In life, we have several obstacles. Sometimes you're spending your mustard seed faith on a pebble. You haven't even gotten to the mountain yet. So when the mountain comes and you stir up your mustard seed faith and you try to swing at this mountain and it does not move, you used it on a pebble, boo. Reload. My husband plays Call of Duty and, and every now and then he'll shoot, 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 shoot. But every now and then he has to reload. Otherwise, the enemy will kill him. It's time for you to reload. You've been shooting blanks. Mm. You've been shooting blanks. It's time for you to reload. One reload can swing and knock out Goliath. How do I know? Well, the Bible says that David swung one time and knocked out his Goliath. He had five stones, but he only swung one time. I dare you to hit reload. And this time, when you pull the trigger, make it count. You are called to be great. It's in you to be great. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how angry you have been. You can and will get through this. God will complete a good work in you and he will perform it until the end if you let him. It's not about God. It's about how you respond to him. It's not about the test. It's about how you respond to the test. It's not about the enemy. He's ineffective. Touch not 
touch not the hair of my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. At the very least, you are anointed. So the enemy can touch not. At the very least, you have a dime of anointing inside of you. At the very least, you have mustard seed sized anointing. Doesn't matter what size it is. Touch not. You are nursing wounds from weapons that did not prosper. You are drowning in invisible floods. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Remind the enemy that when you see the weapon forming, it's big. When you see the weapon forming, encounter it not prospering. Every single time you overcome, it is the weapon not prospering. Every single time you say a prayer and God answers it, it is the weapon not prospering. Every single time you look to the Lord and everything works out just fine, it is the weapon not prospering. Should have been, could have been, would have been dead had it not been for the weapon not prospering. I want to pray for you today because a lot of us have gotten afraid of the weapon. A lot of us are drowning in that invisible flood. Some of us came to the Running Reckless Conference because we are indeed running reckless. God has not called you to run reckless. For the steps of a good man are ordered that even to endure a race that's why I had the girls running you have to run in your lane if you run reckless you could destroy somebody else trying to get to their purpose if you run reckless you could destroy yourself when will you walk in the steps that God has ordered will you obey and sacrifice sometimes the sacrifice is the obedience so we're going to pray that God forgive us for blaming him for what we put ourselves in going to forgive us God for giving the enemy more credit than we give you God, forgive us for acknowledging the enemy before we take a time to acknowledge you. We're going to pray today that God do exactly what the song said and turn around. Will you come to the altar? Is that okay, brother? I'm sorry. That's okay. When you come to the altar, I want you to come with your condition. That condition that caused you to bleed, that, that condition that caused you to doubt, to worry, to be concerned. I want you to come with your bleeding. And when you walk away, when you walk away, walk away whole, walk away complete. Walk away leading with power, love, and a sound mind. Father, we lift our hands to you as a symbol to our reach, Lord God. For just as the woman with the issue of blood reach for, for the very hem of you, God, we reach for the very hem of you. That you know the struggle, you know the condition, you know the pain, you know the problem, God. You can and will fix it. These are your vessels. These are your heirs, Lord God. They are the inheritors of your healing.
power. So do it now. Whoever they stand proxy for God, do it for them. Whoever they stand in the name of Lord God, do it for them. Consume the very connections of each and every person under the sound of my voice that is reaching for you, God, for the perfect deliverance. God, we're sorry. We're sorry, God, for forgetting our power. We're sorry, God, for forgetting that we are vessels. We're sorry for acknowledging the enemy and perceiving him as bigger than you, God. We are sorry. Release us. Deliver us from the bondage and the yokes, God. Send your anointing. The anointing that destroys the yoke, that destroys the generational curses. Send your anointing that heals every broken vessel, God. Send your anointing that reigns and dwells from this day Forward, send your fire. Send your fire. Send your fire, God, and destroy every yoke. Heal us. Deliver us. Set us free. You've called us to lead. Help us. Help us to lead in spirit and in truth don't allow us to sing another note that's not a note by you don't allow us to lift another hand that isn't lifted by you God don't allow us to be false in our relationship remove religion so that we can be real with you we'll be forever careful forever careful to give your name, the praise, the glory, and the honor that it is due. And as we release your people, I pray God that you give them an encounter as you gave the woman with the issue of blood. That the minute that they open their eyes, they will feel whole, complete, and full of power, restoration, and love. And we thank you. And we honor you. And it is so. And so it is. Amen. There are times I don't understand. But I believe it's turning around.